Hi guys, so today's video is going to be the mid-year book freak out tag. I am upset that it is already six months into the year, but here we are. So I thought I would do this tag. And the first question, just jumping right into it, is the best book you've read so far this year? I'm not gonna dive too deep into it because you already know if you watch, if you watch me <laughs> at all, you already know the answer is Flamefall by Rosaria Munda. I just love, it's everything I love. It's everything I love in books. It's political intrigue. It's an examination of different forms of government. It's what would this society look like coming out of a revolution. This one kind of branches out and dives into how other people view the people that are currently in the post-revolution era. It's just, it's so good. Plus there's dragons. And I love the characters. I love the relationships between them. I love the examination of trauma. I love all of the moral questions that come up in this story. It's so good. The next question is about a new release that you haven't read yet, but want to. And I have a few for this one. Uh, I have gotten a couple of arcs, so I'm gonna mention those two, even though they're not officially out yet. But the first one I'm gonna mention, it's actually the one of the June book of the month picks, which was super exciting. And that would be Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. So if I am understanding correctly, this is her adult fantasy debut and it's a retelling of King Arthur. I really enjoyed her Ash Princess trilogy. It was definitely on the tropey side, but I really enjoyed it. And I always thought of it kind of, I know that people hate this term and I do as well, but guilty pleasure read. The reason I hate that term is because I don't think anyone should feel guilty for just enjoying what they're reading unless you're reading about somebody advocating for doing terrible things or something. But <laughs> either way, barring that, I ended up by the end though being really surprised by how um, emotionally connected I was to it and how hard it hit. And I was like, okay, you stuck that landing. I'm really excited to see what you do next. And I was really excited to see that after the ways in which the emotional pool was brought up in that third book, then to go into something maybe potentially a little heavier in adult. I'm just really excited all around. I can't wait to see how she writes this story. So I'm very excited about this one. I'm also very excited about The Pariah by Anthony Ryan. I really enjoyed Blood Song. This is the start to a new series. And it says on the back, following one man's rise from infamous outlaw to famed warrior, The Pariah is a spectacular first novel in an all new epic fantasy trilogy from the international best selling author of Blood Song. The last one I'm gonna mention would be Six Crimson Cranes that I actually do have the arc of, so. I'm hoping to jump into it very soon, but I might not get to it until closer. I just might not get to it yet, but I'm really excited for that one as well. The next question is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So I mentioned a few books that aren't officially out yet and could have been categorized under this one, but I have to go with The Bone Shard Emperor, the sequel to The Bone Shard Daughter. I really enjoyed this story. I thought it was such an interesting mashup of so many different elements of different genres. It is primarily fantasy, but it has mystery elements and a hint of sci-fi also. I love so many of the characters. I mean, there's only so many characters. I loved, I loved one character in particular a lot and his kind of animal companion mythological creature. I loved that storyline. In general, I was just really captivated and interested by everything happening in this story. There were some very creepy moments. There were some very edge of your seat moments. There were some darker moments. I couldn't get enough of it. So we follow a character who, you've heard me talk about this one as well. This is like a recap of everything I've talked about too much, I feel like this year. But we follow a character who has lost some of their memories and their father is the emperor. They are trying to get them to remember things again because he kind of, is the person that knows about the magic system that revolves around using bones to create creatures that will do your bidding. And some of these are very low level and they follow basic commands and then some of them are extremely intelligent and complex and loyal to you. So that aspect is going on, but it's very, it gets, it gets interesting on that end. And then we have a character who's trying to find their missing wife He's the one with the cute animal companion. I always describe him as stumbling into being heroic. And then you have two other characters who are from different backgrounds as far as status and wealth and things. So they have different perspectives on issues going on, but the two of them are trying to work together to better their society. And then you have a random other perspective that you're like, what is going on here? This is weird. 
and I really enjoyed it. So the sequel to this one, I can't wait. The next question says biggest disappointment, which I always feel bad. Uh, I always feel bad answering anything about being disappointed. So I think ultimately I just, I enjoyed the first book in this trilogy so much. I didn't love the second book and I was hoping the third book would bring it home. But I just don't think either the second or third book were as good to me as the first one. And that would be A Vow So Bold and Deadly. It was fine. It was a fine end to the this, this series. It was fun. And I have two little nieces. When they get older, I think it'll be really fun to recommend maybe this series to them if it's something that sounds fun to them. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, portal fantasy. It's a lot of fun. I loved the first book. I loved Harper, the main character, so much. And I just... I think it could have been a standalone. Like I said, it just kind of went down for me. It, it didn't plummet. I didn't think it was trash. I didn't hate the ending, but I just, I loved the first book. So I guess this one, another one would be Ruin of Kings. I did not care for that book. I thought that book, I thought I was going to love it. I thought it was going to be so interesting and unique and cool. And it was unique. And it was interesting, but... I did not enjoy the experience of reading that book, and I thought I would, so also Ruin of Kings. Next up, we have Biggest Surprise, and I have to give that to Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. I did not care for Uprooted in the slightest. I did not like Uprooted at all. And these two are, I feel like the cover designs look similar. I feel like they were marketed kind of similarly also and they kind of go hand in hand when people discuss standalones or just Naomi Novik in general that these two are just they're paired together and because I didn't like Uprooted so much I was really nervous to go into this one but so many of you said hey I also didn't like Uprooted but I love Spinning Silver or they're very different from each other so there's a chance that you'll still like this one and I did I loved it I was like okay we'll see but I ended up really liking this story. I thought that the way the folklore was incorporated into it was fantastic. I loved the, uh, it's kind of historical fiction feel to it. And I really enjoyed that aspect. I also really like historical fiction besides just fantasy. So I liked that it felt like a combination of both things. I loved the focus on the main characters having to be clever and having to use what they have available to them to get out of certain situations and how to be heroic in small ways because based off of how much power they are allowed within their society within this time period there's only so much they can do but they find ways to do it and to get things done and it was just so cool to see that in this story so it's not your typical hero story and also the uh i'm gonna call him like the fey king character I found kind of hilarious. <laughs> so just the way that he would talk and things that he would say, he would always talk in circles. And I found it, the main character would get so annoyed and I also would have been so annoyed. But since it wasn't happening to me, I found it funny. I'll also just add that I really enjoyed Dark of the West. This is a World War One, World War II inspired fantasy story. It really has no fantasy elements besides the fact that it's a different world from our own. And it feels kind of like Spinning Silver, very historical fiction, but it's not historical fiction because it's not our own world. But it's very niche and we have a character who's a fighter pilot and then we have a character who's kind of a princess of a land that they are, like, war feels like it's coming and there's this looming dread of the fact that you're like, a war is going to happen. You just can feel it and you know that these two characters who ultimately end up caring for one another are going to end up that's the feeling you get the whole time you're reading and you're just waiting for it to happen and you're like, this is going to be a tragedy. And I really liked it. It does not hit the same beats as far as pacing that you would typically find in anything. I feel like it, it kind of just meanders, but that oddly makes it feel more real and the characters are quite flawed. Sometimes you're really annoyed with them. Next up, we have favorite new author or new to you. It could be a debut author as well. And also the next question after that is fictional crush. I wasn't really sure what to say for either of these. I feel like there have been a couple books that I've read that have just confirmed for me that I really like those authors, but I decided to go with one that was totally new to me. And that would be Giles Christian. 
their writing is absolutely stunning. And as far as that next question goes, I don't know. I don't really crush on fictional characters too often, but I guess I would go with the character in this kind of, but not really, I don't know. I do love Jovis though. I mentioned Jovis from The Bone Char Daughter. I loved that character a lot. So that may be Jovis, but I did already talk about The Bone Char Daughter. But anyway, Giles Christian, I can't wait to read more of this author's works. I just think that he, I don't know what it is about his writing. It's not, it's not overly poetic. It's not dense. It's just, it's pretty and you kind of want to sit with it while you're reading. It, it doesn't necessarily lend itself for a fast paced story, but you just feel transported. Next up, we have the newest favorite character and I don't, I wasn't sure what to pick for this one either, but I just decided to embrace my love of Flamefall and Fireborn. Annie, I loved so much in the things that Annie goes through. In both, like, in the first book, you really explore this character's past, and it's horrific, but the strength that they have based on, they, they just, they have, they have so little. You don't know what this, it's such like an internal strength in a society that does not necessarily uplift them either. So they're kind of having to go against the fact that society just seems prone to rooting for someone else all the time, not her, not someone with her background. And then in the second book, it goes from they're not really rooting for you, maybe they're rooting against you, to like outright the things that people say about her, the things people want to have happen to her, the way that she is portrayed, and you just feel so badly for this character and the way that they just take it like a champ. I mean, I would be distraught. I would be in a mess, but I would like to believe I would be like Annie. <laughs> I know I wouldn't. I know I'd be complaining all the time to my friends, but Annie just, she just accepts it and she just keeps going. And what I like is some of the things that she does, some of the decisions that she makes, I don't know necessarily that those are the things that I would do, but I still can see where she's coming from always and she always approaches everything with the mindset of what she thinks is best for everyone, what she thinks is the greater good and that is what she is living for. It is so admirable. I love her so much. So, Annie. Next question is a book that made you cry. I've never cried reading a book, but I got quite emotional reading the book Evicted. This is a nonfiction book that talks about eviction in America. It is incredible incredibly well documented, unbelievably so. The author, he ended up living in the area that he was doing his research for. He just kind of, with their permission, shadowed people, followed them around, recorded things, took extensive notes, did research as far as what the policies are and laws. He would go down to the courts. He would follow both landlords and tenants. It's incredible how much time and just the mental toll that writing this took or just even researching for this took. It's amazing. It's heartbreaking. But the part, the whole thing is terrible. But there's just something about the end of this when it talks about a, about this project. He made the decision to not write this book in first person. He made the decision to remove himself as much as possible and just present the facts backed up with some policies and things like that. So he wanted, it seems so much to be like, here is the information without there being through the lens of him or his emotions and his thoughts. But at the very end, at the about the project section, it talks about how the people that he was shadowing, these people who are experiencing homelessness and eviction, and sometimes due to some very troubling things, the connections that he had with these people, like something as simple as one person always sends his his son, the author's son, one of the people that he was kind of shadowing always sends like a birthday card. And then at one point, one of these families who, when you read about this family, like they have nothing. They're living in horrific, horrible conditions. But there was one part where they like, they made him a cake. And it's just like... <laughs> I don't know, there's something about seeing people that are experiencing such extreme hardship still have this kindness in them. I don't know what it was, but it just, it got me at that. Oh my gosh, it was so emotional. Another book that almost, almost made me cry was the book Parachutes. This is a story that details uh, predatory behavior. And in this particular book toward young girls, they're in high school. And that book was, there was like a part toward the end where I was like, 
okay, get it together. Like if I wanted to cry, I could have cried kind of thing. Next up, we have a book that made you happy. And I had to go with Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. So this is a book that like, I, it just, it just made me happy. It made me very happy. This author, I've read three books by them now. While well, we, <laughs> I was gonna say what we do in the shadows. I always do that. That's my favorite TV show. It's hilarious. It's a mockumentary about vampires. No, it's called The Shadows Between Us, the book. I read that one. I read Warrior of the Wild and now this one. They're all quite different, but they all just do the same thing for me, which is just pure entertainment. That's what this one did. I just, I was like, oh, it's exactly what I need right now. I picked it up for that reason. It delivered. It follows a character who has the ability to make these magical weapons and they, end up making a weapon that might go into the hands of somebody who would use it for evil. And so then they're kind of on the run, them and their sister are on the run alongside a mercenary that they've hired to protect them. And then a person that kind of tagged along, but is uh, scrappy. They're helpful in their own way. And there's some twists and turns along the way. There's some romance. There's some fun banter. It's just silly and fun and adventurous. It was exactly what I was hoping for. And it definitely made me happy. Next, we have the most beautiful book that you have bought so far this year. So a book that just really came to me at the right time last year, last year was very difficult for me, would be Spin the Dawn and its sequel Unravel the Dusk. It has some pretty mixed reviews. A lot of people were hoping it would be more of what it was marketed as, which was a Mulan retelling mixed with Project Runway, when in actuality, it's more of a traveling love story. And I think it also is quite whimsical. But something about it just felt cozy at a time in my life when things were not cozy or great in the slightest. So I just have this connection with this book. And the UK editions are gorgeous. But on top of that, there are these special editions that came out. I haven't gotten them yet. I don't think I'm going to get them until toward the end of the year. But they are some of the most beautiful books I've ever seen. They're so pretty and I can't wait to get them. The last question is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? There's a whole bunch. Um, I really, really, really want to get to the sequel to Ray Bear. So that's another one that I could have listed as an anticipated release that I'm excited for. But I'm absolutely really excited for that one. And I definitely need to get to all of the buddy reads that I have set up for this year in case any of you are wondering and we made this known when we uh made the list of buddy reads but uh there's a list of one book each month for this year to be read with my friend Jessie May who has her own channel but at the time that I made the video I could not say why there might be some bit of uh like we would do live shows initially but then maybe not after that we'd play it by ear and it was because jesse was pregnant which she wasn't telling people at the time which is why you haven't seen the live shows uh for buddy read books but i still need to get to those and jesse has had her baby since and announced that she was pregnant since then so she's you know being a mom in things but yes i need to get to all of the buddy read books i'll have the video linked that has all of them listed in case you're interested but uh, depending on what's going on with Jesse's uh, new mom life, uh, I don't know what the situation will be as far as live shows and things like that moving forward. But anyway, those, I need to read those. I have quite a few arcs that I have been accepted for that I need to get around to. But I just guess for, you know, narrowing it down. I'm just going to say the sequel to Ray Bear. I'm very excited about it and I need to read it. That's it for the mid-year book freak out tag. This is a tag I feel like nobody actually ends up tagging anybody for because people just do it if they want to do it. But if you want to do it, I tag you. So there you go. I hope you're all doing lovely. I hope you're having a great first half of the year. I feel like I need to recharge and then get things back together for the second half because I feel like there's still things from last year that are affecting this year that pop up. And so it's, you know, it's a process. I feel like we're all kind of recovering from 2020, but hopefully you are thriving. <laughs> and uh, I hope you're having a great first half of the year. I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>